Hello everybody. Today's video is about a car show I went to yesterday and it was at a local restaurant and I got awesome video of the car show. But unfortunately, there was constant music playing in the background and we know that um, we can't put that up on YouTube. Plus there was a lot of families walking around and we know that we can't put that up on YouTube. So I took some good pictures and I wanted to highlight my four favorite cars of the show. So you'll see a, a theme to this is that I owned uh, cars similar to the first two that are in my favorites. So I guess I'm a little biased. This is a 1971 Dodge Charger 440. So it's the 440 that makes it pretty rare because you have to remember in 71, they were starting to get out of the muscle car game. And you pretty much uh, find a charger in this body style, and you can guarantee it's going to be a small block, probably a 318. So my first car was a 71 Dodge Charger with a 318 two-barrel. I blew that car up at Front Street, uh, drag racing it, and it uh, threw a timing chain, and the pistons came up and hit the valves. And that's how I became a mechanic, in case you were curious. Because, you know, when I was 18, uh, this car needed engine work, and I had to learn how to do it myself or walk. So uh, they say uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And 40 years later, I just retired from being a mechanic because of that first 71 Dodge Charger. I just wanted to mention my Charger hat was tan with a green top. And green interior. So it turns out that that is a really rare combination and I couldn't even find a picture of it. But you can see here's a uh, 69 that is green with a tan top and tan interior. So mine was opposite and it turns out you never know what you had, right? And when uh, eventually I took the 318 out and I, I grabbed a uh, 360 police interceptor engine out of a uh, police car in the junkyard and uh, I probably got the car into the high 13s uh, quarter mile because that was my game I wanted to uh, you know go to street nights and we had a lot of fun with the car so here and it definitely the lime green color caught my attention and you can see that they have blacked out the grills and this was just a nice car but the 440 was um, definitely caught my attention. And right next to it was a 71 that had a 318 in it, which is, you know, normally what you will find in these cars. Do have another picture of it here. And um, it, it certainly did not win, um, you know, best of show or anything like that, but it was really clean and it took me back down memory lane. And that's why you go to these car shows, right? So the next car was a Bandit Trans Am and I had a 79 this is also a 1979 and everybody remembers you know the Smokey and the, Smokey and the Bandit movies and um, you know the Shaker Hood with a 6.6 .6 liter in 1979 was an extremely unique situation and when you were sitting behind the wheel and you were at a stoplight and you nailed it that Shaker Hood would shift on over and you could tell, you know, uh, the, the amount of torque that the 6.6 .6 liter had. So you could have two different engines. The good one was the uh, 400 Pontiac. And then they say that the bad one was the 403 Olds motor. But to be honest with you, I really, um, I, I, I went to street night and I went up against a 403 and I barely won. So, I mean, my point is, is that these cars were very similar as far as performance. And I do have uh, a couple more pictures here. And I mentioned this in my previous video, which I will link to. Uh, when you have a black car, it is just so hard to shine that thing up and not get any swirl marks in it. And there was a slight cloud, uh, you know, cloudy day. And... A lot of times you will be able, you can see the tree reflected in the paint of this car and how shiny it was. But what was remarkable is, is that there was not a single swirl mark. And you can tell from the condition of this paint 
how well this car was cared for. T-tops, um, which is, you know, not really good from a strength of, uh, this car is already a subframe car, and then you cut these big sections out of the roof, and it actually weakens the car further, and you get a lot of twist. Um, but it's a lot of fun to pull off those T-tops and take a cruise on a nice day. And I always enjoyed the, uh, the dual tips. You know, you had four tips, two on each side. And this Trans Am was just in fantastic condition. It had the original uh, gold snowflake rims. I think I got another picture here of it. <clears throat> it was just a fun car to look at. Again, it did not win best of show. And, uh, you know, I might like this car more than everybody else because I owned one. But that's the way these things go. So let me move on. Uh, we have one more picture of that. This one, uh, you know, uh, as this was a 69 Nova SS 396. To me, it's pretty rare because when you see these cars, they often had the 350. The SS had the 350 in it. And the 350 was nothing uh, to be disappointed about because it was a 300 horsepower 350. So you got a small block with less weight and a good amount of horsepower. Um, the 396, hmm, I believe it was 350 horsepower, but it could have been 360 horsepower. But then it came with more weight to it. This one had dual tips. It looked really nice. It was in the original, I think they called it Hugger Orange with the white racing stripes. It was a beautiful car. Here's a picture of the uh, 396 turbo jet. Oh, this one is saying 425 horsepower. I believe that this is just a sticker because they were 360 horsepower from the factory. But this gentleman had an Edelbrock manifold and a performance carburetor. So, you know, maybe he boosted the horsepower up and put that sticker on, which is, of course, his right to do. Um, you know, in 69, this wasn't the last year for the 396. It was 1970 was the last year that they put the big block uh, in the Supersport Nova. But it came down in horsepower a little bit. And then in 1971, you could no longer get the, uh, after 1971, 72 model year, you couldn't get a big block anymore. So this was just a fantastic car to see. And uh, he fired it up a couple of times. It had a, had a cam in it, and it sounded real sweet. And this car, again, did not win best of show. But I love the uh, factory Chevy Rally wheels, and it was just spotless. And it had, um, uh, it was, oh, it was a four speed car. They, you know, again, a, a four, you know, most of them came through with the automatic. This was a factory four speed 396. Whew, almost forgot about that part. Fact, Rock Crusher, right? Everybody hears the name Rock Crusher. It was a Rock Crusher four speed 396 Super Sport Nova. So that was a cool car. So my last car here. Probably not going to be as interesting to everybody else as it is to me, but it was this bullet back riv. And this was, they only made these three years, 71 through 73. This one was a 1971 example, and it had the 455 HD in it. Now, every time I saw these cars, I was thinking, what happens if you have to replace the back glass? Well, it turns out that <laughs> the back glass is still readily available because the car rotted out around the back window and most of these cars are in the junkyard but the glass survived <laughs> because glass doesn't rust and you can get the back glass for a bullet back riv on ebay for 300 bucks so that's pretty amazing to me but they leaked around this trim and then they started to rust out around the back window they used to call this, uh, when GM came out with it, they came. They, they called it the boat tail, as in that the rear, the, the, the tail of the car looked like a boat. Uh, but it quickly got the name bullet back rib because, you know, it was shaped like a bullet. Very aerodynamic. This one had uh, uh, American racing wheels and white uh, sidewall tires. Here's a picture of the 455 HD four barrel. 
So in 1971, like I was saying, the horsepower game was over. But this car still put out 300 horsepower on the books. And I had a friend that had a, uh, a 455 Riv. Um, it was one year before the, the uh, bullet back. And his 455 on a dyno at the rear wheels put out 325 horsepower. So it definitely had some get up and go. And the Riviera was luxurious and quick. It could definitely burn the tires all at the same time. I mean, this was in competition with Cadillac as far as the luxury went. This one had a Landau top, which is a partial vinyl top. And it was just in immaculate condition. I really liked the car. And uh, I might be alone in that. Uh, but it was a fun car to see at the show. Because you always see Camaros and Mustangs and Corvettes. And, you know, hey, here's a 71 bullet back Riv, right? So this was a really unique car. And it was a great car show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys made it through this far, please give me a thumbs up. My channel is not doing all that well. I would like to keep it going. There are It's uh, springtime here in Florida, and there are car shows every week. So um, go ahead and uh, put the notification bell on so that you get notified of my next car show video. And thanks for stopping by today.